Hey everyone, my name is Paul and this heavy thing is a 150cc GY6 engine. In this video, I'll show you how to remove the engine from your scooter. There are several different body styles of Chinese scooters, so taking the plastic off will be different on all of them. On my scooter, the floor plastic comes off first, then you can take out the seat compartment. The rack and grab handles hold the rear plastic fairing. The seat release cable and rear lights have to be disconnected, then the rear plastic comes off. My scooter also has an inner fender lining here. And this is what my scooter looks like with no body panels. The CDI, starter solenoid, and muffler are on the right side. On the left side, you'll find the airbox and transmission. The gas tank is in the floor. The horn, turn signal flasher, and voltage regulator are up front. I'm disconnecting the fuel hose from the tank and dumping the extra gas back in. Use a 12mm wrench to loosen the nut that holds the throttle cable. Pull it out of the bracket, then disconnect the cable from the carburetor. I'll need to loosen the hose clamp that holds the air intake tube. Two more bolts hold the air box above the transmission. The rear brake cable nut takes a 14mm wrench. With the nut all the way off, I can pull the brake cable out. This little bracket holds the cable above the transmission. It's time to disconnect some wiring. The engine and wiring harness are grounded to the frame here. I'm cutting a few more zip ties and pulling this mess of wires off the frame. The fuel pump is vacuum operated and pulls gas up from the gas tank to the carburetor. This is the ignition coil. The rear shock is attached to the frame with one bolt. A long bolt holds the engine onto the frame and acts as the main pivot for the rear suspension. Now there is nothing holding the engine on, but the carburetor is still in the way. And that's it, the engine is out. I took the engine out so I could do some frame modifications and make my scooter look like this. Now the engine can go back in. Insert the long through bolt from the left side and wiggle the engine to help it find the hole. Chinese scooters have a tendency to fall apart, so adding Loctite to all the important bolts is a good idea. The rear shock is the only other thing holding the engine. Add some Loctite to this bolt too, so it doesn't vibrate off later. The engine and wiring harness are grounded to the frame here. The engine ground cable connects to the upper valve cover bolt. The CDI is held onto the frame by this shitty piece of rubber. Another shitty piece of rubber is supposed to hold the starter solenoid. I taped the CDI, starter solenoid, and wiring harness onto the scooter. I connected both positive wires to one battery terminal to make the scooter easier to work on. And this is what we have so far. The starter power wire is held on with a Phillips head bolt. I shortened the stator wiring to make the scooter less messy. The yellow, white, and green wires charge the battery, and the blue and red wires tell the CDI when to fire the spark plug. The coil is held on by an M5 by 0.8 mm bolt and mounts back here. The engine pivots up and down, so make sure to leave plenty of slack in the spark plug wire. The brake cable is next. Install the return spring, then tighten the adjuster nut. Adjust the brake tight enough so you can't pull the lever all the way to the handlebar. The brake pads will make a little bit of noise, but the wheel should still spin easily. The brake cable is held onto the transmission with this little bracket. The fuel hose between the fuel filter and carburetor is 3 16 inch inside diameter and it's quarter inch inside diameter going to the fuel shutoff valve and to the gas tank. I plugged the vacuum port on the intake manifold that was for the fuel pump. There will be only one vacuum hose going to the side of the carburetor. Tighten the two nuts holding the intake manifold and don't forget to plug in the idle enricher. The throttle cable is next. Hook the cable end into the pulley first, then install the cable into the bracket. Adjust the cable so the throttle snaps shut and has a little bit of play. Tighten the nut with a 12mm wrench. I wanted to use a foam pod filter, but it didn't fit. The stock intake is better anyway because it's actually easier to install, makes the engine quieter, and does a really good job of keeping dirt and water out of the carburetor. PCV stands for Positive Crankcase Ventilation. The PCV hose takes vapors from the crankcase and feeds them back into the airbox. I'm skimming over the plastic stuff very quickly because this video isn't about the body panels. I have another video where I show that in more detail. 
I replaced the gas tank in the floor with this aluminum gas tank above the rear plastic. Because it's higher than the carburetor, I don't need a fuel pump. The gas goes down the whole way. Before we put everything back together, let's hook up the battery and test the scooter. This gas tank is easier to reach and easier to fill than the old one. Okay, it runs and doesn't leak gas. That's great. Finally, the seat compartment and battery go back in. Removing the engine from a Chinese scooter is actually very easy once you get past all the plastic stuff. Thanks for watching and remember to check out my other scooter repair videos.